Thank you all for coming today. Um, my name is Jose Santiago. I'm the media manager here with the Glendale Police Department. Um, today we're here to discuss an attempted kidnapping arrest that was made a week ago today. Um, this was a very scary situation for this family as well as the community as a whole. Uh, but we are thankful of the good detective work that our officers did to not only get this person off the street but prevent this from happening to anyone else. Today you're going to hear from Officer Moroni Mendez, that's spelled M-O-R-O-N-I Mendez, M-E-N-D-E-Z. Uh, he will discuss the facts about the case and our arrest. Um, then we have Valerie Fr Frijo, and again that's spelled F-R-A-I-J-O, and she is the mother of the victim. So with that I'm going to bring up Officer Moroni Mendez. We good? Yeah. All right, perfect. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm here to talk about the case that Jose was speaking about. Exactly a week ago on Wednesday, uh, March 6th, uh, our patrol officers received a call for service to respond to the area of 87th Avenue in Solano. This call was received at about 1.30 p.m. As uh, our officers arrived, they spoke to a 14-year-old female victim who began telling them about an attempted, an attempted kidnapping that she was a victim of. At about 1 p.m., she was walking home from school, and in the intersection of 91st Avenue and Cardinals Way, she was approached by a light-colored vehicle. This vehicle pulled up next to her and stopped, and a male exited the front passenger seat. This male then began following her, and our victim told officers that immediately she began to sense uh, danger. You know, she started fearing for her life and she felt like something wasn't right. Uh, she did an excellent job of being aware of her surroundings and noticed that the vehicle was occupied by two people. So as she began walking home, uh, she noticed that the male would either match her speed or increase his pace to get closer and close the distance. Um, again, I repeat, she sensed what was going on. She felt a great deal of danger and as soon as she felt like he was too close, she began running away. She ran into the neighbor, neighborhood that was close by through the landscaping and greenbelt area. And as soon as she found uh, an adult walking his dog, uh, she contacted him, approached him, and spoke to him about what was going on. It was then that they were able to contact on the police department, and that's when we showed up to assume the investigation. As Jose was speaking, our officers and our detectives did an excellent job in this case. They were able to follow up canvassed the area for video, uh, both from traffic cameras and from residents, and were able to capture parts of the incident. In the video we have available, we can see the vehicle pull up, stop next to her, the male exit, and then begin to follow her. In a second clip, we also see our female victim running away for her, for her safety, for her life. Uh, we want to commend her and congratulate her for doing such a phenomenal job in doing exactly everything she was supposed to causing a scene, running away, seeking help, telling an adult, and ultimately contacting the Glendale Police Department. This individual has since been identified as 28-year-old Timothy Tan Guan. He has been arrested and is currently being held. He's facing charges of kidnapping, aggravated assault, and unlawful imprisonment. Before we take any questions, I'm going to have the victim's mother step forward and she would like to make a statement as well. Um, so I primarily want to thank the city of Glendale, Detective Brown, and the officer that came out the day that we made the call. Um, you guys did a phenomenal job. Uh, the next day he was arrested and taken off the streets, and that is, is I'm sorry, <laughs> this, that is crucially important, um, getting these individuals out of our community out of our valley uh, to protect our children. It's really scary. Us parents, we go to school, we go to work, and we trust our children to, at the end of the day from school, to walk home and make it safely home. And I'm so grateful that my daughter did such a great job running from this individual, having her, her senses of being aware of what's going on around her. And I'm super, super proud of her, and I'm super proud with the detectives, the officers, and Glendale Police. Mm -hmm. um, sí, en español, eh, 
le quiero dar gracias a la ciudad de Glendale um, porque mi, sobri, mi, uh, mi hija después de la escuela ella iba caminando hacia la casa y este individuo um, se quiso aprovechar y en ese momento se llamó la policía, el policía hizo excelente trabajo, el detective hizo excelente trabajo, ese mismo día estaba en mi casa, al otro día él ya estaba detenido. Um, muchas gracias al detective, muchas gracias al oficial que le puso tanto esfuerzo y dedicación a este caso, eh, a mi niña que hizo tan buen trabajo en correr a la casa, darse cuenta que algo no estaba normal y para la comunidad y para todos los niños que caminan de la escuela hacia la casa o también en la mañana, pongan atención, si algo no está bien, Revisen qué carro se acerca, revisen quién está alrededor, no hablen con nadie. Es muy, muy importante tener la seguridad de todos y los papás tienen que estar alerta que estas personas saben cuando nuestros hijos van a la escuela y también cuando salen de la escuela. Y es muy importante que los niños vayan a la escuela, disfruten y también puedan llegar a sus casas a, a en lugar que nunca lleguen. So, muchas gracias al detective y al oficial. So we're going to open the floor to questions to Officer Maroney. Um, prior to opening the floor, we are going to release this video to you all, but we're going to play a video of the actual incident. And once again, we're going to release an edited and unedited vi version for the media, but we want you guys to see it. So this way, if you have any questions about the video, you can ask those to Officer Maroney Mendez as well. The video is going to play on that screen behind you. Once again, it's going to get released, so cameramen, you don't necessarily have to shoot it, but you can if you want to. So the victim is on the left there in that circle. You will slowly see the vehicle approaching behind her. slowly see the suspect exiting the vehicle. In this video, this is captured from a nearby surveillance camera and she's running away from the suspect. And once again, we will release this as well as video of the car circulating through the neighborhood and that is our suspect. And Officer Mendez will answer any questions you might have. Is the driver of the vehicle facing any charges? Can you tell us anything about who that is? Yes, of course, and that's a great question. It's a high-profile case, and it's currently being investigated, so we're not ruling out any avenue. We're, we're going to explore all avenues, and um, that's um, definitely something we're considering, and it's, it's being investigated and reviewed. Can we say that's a man driving the car? It was two men in the car? It was a female driving and a male suspect. Yes, yeah, so public information dictates that this individual does have a criminal history with similar offenses. However, we cannot speak on investigations related to other agencies. Um, you know, we're, we're here to talk about this one, um, the cases that, the case that we're filing against him, and then also commend our 14-year-old victim for doing a phenomenal job and, you know, the work, the fine work our officers and our detectives are doing. And then she was followed by both the person on foot and the car, is that correct? Correct. Este, nuestros oficiales, de hecho, nuestros detectives y nuestro departamento tienen diversos recursos disponibles para nosotros este, investigar casos como estos. En este caso usamos las uh, cámaras de tráfico disponibles y las cámaras de residentes en el área que tienen de seguridad. Entonces, usando esos dos recursos, más aparte, uh, información disponible a los oficiales pudieron 
hacer la investigación y últimamente o al fin poder este, identificar este individuo. ¿Dónde fue arrestado? Fue arrestado cerca de su hogar. ¿Vivía cerca de donde vivía la víctima? No. Uh, yes, in Spanish I was asked, uh, you know, what resources or how we were able to identify uh, our suspect. And what I said was that our officers, our detectives, and our department as a whole, as a whole has a lot of resources, a lot of uh, instruments and tools available to us. So in this instance, we were able to use traffic cameras along with surveillance from residents in the area, you know, their security cameras of their home, to identify the plate, follow up on that, you know, obviously we have law enforcement or police databases available to us that we use to ultimately identify the vehicle, its registered owners, so on and so forth, until we found the individual and were able to apprehend him. When was he arrested, I'm sorry? When? When was he arrested? I know this happened Wednesday. Uh, Correct. Was he arrested the same day? So? Great question. So it happened March 6th, last Wednesday, and he was arrested the very next day, March 7th. What are his charges? They are kidnapping, which is ARS 13-1304-A4, aggravated assault, ARS 13-1204-A6, and unlawful imprisonment, ARS 13-1303-A. Was he a, a stranger to the victim? Yes, he was a stranger to the victim. And he was found at his house or arrested at his house? Correct. And was the woman taken into custody or questioned? She was taken into custody and questioned, yes. Uh, can you um, spell out the name one more time and the age of the suspect? Absolutely. His name is 20, or sorry, he is 28 years old, and his name is Timothy Tan Guan. Timothy, T-I-M-O-T-H-Y, middle name Tan, T-A-N, last name Guan, G-U-A-N. Where does he live? Uh, he's a resident, well, he has multiple addresses, two of which are in Glendale. Is this a typical route for this child to take? Does she always walk home from school? Is this is kind of normal behavior for her? As far as we know, yeah, she, she walks to and from school. And it's always typically safe, never run into this guy before? Absolutely. Do you want to yeah. answer? We, we, we have the mother here that can yeah. answer that question better than I can. Do you want to come yeah. up? Yeah. Just tell us a little bit about your daughter walking to and from school and how that's typically safe for her. Yes, yeah, so I work and I attend school, so I depend on her. Um, we drop her off in the morning, and she does have to walk home. She walks about two miles, so that's normally the route that she takes, so this is an everyday thing for us. And what school does she go to? Uh, Raymond Kellis. What grade is she in? She is a freshman. Have you had um, at-home conversations about situations like this, like how to prepare or in talking to her now, how did she know how to react? Because, you know, you never know in those type of situations what you're going to do to uh, be able to protect yourself. Yeah, so with her, um, I just bring up to her, to her attention, uh, when you're walking home, don't have your, your AirPods. Be aware of your surroundings. When you're crossing the street, make sure that you're crossing when the sign is appropriate. Um, Make sure that any unusual activity, be aware, keep looking back. Uh, always charge your phone so you can call anybody. Call the police first. Um, she called me and I'm like, call the police. So kids, call the police first and then call your parents, then call relatives. Call the police first so there's already somebody coming to help primarily. So that's just something that that I mentioned to her. I'm like, you did a great job. You were the only person in that situation. You did what your instinct told you to do. You didn't do anything wrong. However, for any kids out there, call the police first. Call because I was in school when this was happening and um, it took me quite some time to get where she was at. So call the police. <laughs> we just watched the video of that whole situation unfold. When you were seeing it, what was running through your mind through it, that whole situation? It broke my heart because it was in a scenario where it was my friend or my mom or my brother sending me a clip on TikTok, on Facebook, on Instagram, where I'm currently watching and it's somebody else's child. And I'm like, man, I hope that kid makes it. it there's a difference here. This is my baby. This is my daughter. And just to think that she was on her way home and maybe I wasn't going to get home to her. So extremely crazy. It's sad to watch how people like this do these things to women, children, men. It doesn't matter. It, it was just 
sometimes it, I don't know, I can't even describe it. It was a whole different scenario. And how's your daughter doing now? We know it's been a week, but I imagine it's very traumatizing for her. Definitely. Um, currently at night, she'll cry. Um, there was, there's days that she doesn't want to go to school, but we have to continue her education, um, you know, cheer her up because she did such a great job defending herself, running for safety, asking for help. Uh, there was a, a neighbor walking his dog, and she asked for help. So right now, um, we're just getting through it. Can you tell us a bit more about that phone call when she called you initially? Yes, yeah, so uh, I was in class and uh, I was doing an activity with other students and she calls me and she's like mom somebody's chasing me and I'm like what do you mean somebody's chasing you she's like yes uh, a neighbor just walked me home and I immediately left school and that's when she started telling me more about it so yeah Eh, claro que sí, eh, he hablado con amistades y algunos vecinos que saben lo que está pasando, um, la niña ya no camina, so gracias he tenido gente que me está apoyando en ir por ella a la escuela y traérmela en la casa, so ese es un método que, que pudimos arreglar para que la niña ya no camine de la escuela a la casa. Sí, so ella me marcó, yo estaba en la escuela, yo voy a la escuela, yo estaba en clases haciendo una actividad con mis otros compañeros y ella me marca llorando agitada y me dice, ma, me dice, eh, me estaban siguiendo, un señor me encaminó a la casa y cuando yo supe que un señor la encaminó a la casa, pues yo sentí alarmante porque nadie la debe de estar encaminando, ¿verdad? ¿Qué tal si la persona que ella se topó en la calle no era buena? ¿Verdad? So, yo me preocupé, en ese momento yo me reporté con mi maestra, le dije que tenía una emergencia, que me iba a ir y ya llegando a la casa es cuando yo me enteré que eh, una persona la estaba siguiendo a ella y es cuando ella muy agitada, llorando, la tuvimos que calmar para que me explicara. So, de hecho, cuando yo llegué a la casa ya estaba la, la policía de Glendale en la casa. Muy desesperante para una madre de familia. Hablamos acerca de cómo te sentías, qué es lo que pasaba por tu mente cuando tu niña de pronto te llama y escuchas lo peor, lo que un padre... Terror, familia... terror. Imagínate, llegar a... Tú piensas que, que estás bien, tú estás trabajando y en el momento que tú estás trabajando ni en cuenta que a tus hijos les están haciendo un daño, ¿verdad? Eh, yo me pasaron todo por la cabeza, dije qué tal si la sigue siguiendo, qué tal si todavía está en la casa esta persona, um, cómo la quisieron subir, ella me decía mami la persona que iba uh, manejando le abría la puerta para que me tiraran adentro más rápido para que me subieran y, y era lo que ella repetía mucho, repetía le querían abrir, la persona manejando le abría la puerta para que me subiera, ella era lo que repetía como que se, se trababa ahí. Como que ella no lo procesaba, no lo podía creer. ¿Qué hubieras hecho tú si pudieras haber estado en el lugar de los hechos? Porque supongo que es lo que a ti te hubiese gustado estar ahí. ¿verdad? Eh, como si yo eh, fuera ella en su lugar o si yo fuera visto lo que le estaba pasando a ella. ¿Cuál es tu pregunta? Perdón. Sí, si tú estuvieras ahí como madre de familia, hubieras interferido el mensaje quizá para otros padres de familia, tus acciones, ¿no? Oh. No estuviste ahí, creo que hasta cierto punto pues es una... Eh, es impotencia, no sí. para defender a tu hija. Sí, sí, pues imagínate, en el momento que yo estaba en la, en la clase eh, y ella la escuché en su voz, inmediatamente salirme, salirme y tratar de irme. Yo sentía que los semáforos no se movían cuando estaban en rojo. Um, eh, ¿Cómo te diré? No te lo puedo explicar, la verdad, es, es algo muy feo. Es algo muy feo escuchar la voz de tu hijo sabiendo que está en un tipo de peligro y que esta persona desconocida la quería subir al carro y ella diciéndome en el teléfono, es que la persona que manejaba me quería, le ayudaba para que me subiera. ¿Qué vas a hacer? Y ahora al escuchar que él tiene antecedentes penales muy vinculados, relacionados con ese tipo de crimen, ¿qué te llega a la mente? Que es una persona que no debe de estar libre. Una persona que el juez o quien esté manejando su caso, que pongan mucha atención, porque si esta persona ya trae antecedentes, um, no sé, la verdad no sé mucho del individuo, pero con tu pregunta, pues, 
Can uh -huh. you reiterate in English to the other channels how you felt when you got that phone call? And Tara? I just want to quickly say she cannot comment on the suspect. It's an active case still, and so we we cannot allow her to comment on the suspect. Mm -hmm. Es única hija. Eh, sí. Bueno, tengo tengo más niños, pero es la más grande mía. ¿De cuántos? Eh, tengo seis. <laughs> so if you can just tell the uh, other channels how you felt when you got that phone call. Um, when I received my daughter's phone call, it was terrible. Um, honestly, I feel like time was going by very slow when I left class, and I just wanted the red lights to hurry up and turn green. Um, it, it was just, it's hard to explain the feeling that, I, it, terrifying. Terrifying, stress, anxiety, you name it. Kind of explain what um, your daughter let you know later of um, you know, what they said or, or what they were trying to do to kind of uh, open the door and, and maybe get her inside or, or anything like that. Can you repeat your question? We, yeah, when we can't have her comment on that because it's still an open case, but the form four details what okay. we need to know. Okay. But for we, you we, as a just mother, for her for her sake and for the sanctity of the case, we just can't have her commenting. As a mother, what's it like having your daughter on the seat tonight knowing that could have been a lot different? Thankful. I'm blessed because imagine kids that don't make it. Imagine moms that don't get to see their kids. I'm blessed for sure, 100%. I feel blessed. My family feels blessed. We all do. And your daughter ran to the nearest neighborhood. That's not your neighborhood, correct? That is our neighborhood. Yeah. So she was, how did she you mean, know to do that? Or that, did she say that was just her natural instinct? Uh, yeah, that was her natural instinct. Um, I talk to the kids and I always make them aware, hey, if you don't know anybody, get far away from them. Uh, speed walk, don't, don't stay there. It, run, run for your safety, have a reaction, but don't stay there. And how many kids do you have? Oh, I have six. For you guys, um, I was gonna ask, I know that there was uh, another attempted abduction involving, um, a, I believe a juvenile, uh, two months ago around January 26th. So just talk about, you know, I mean, obviously uh, another case and so just, uh, you know, your warning to parents or, or um, you know, a message to parents. Absolutely. As you stated not too long ago, <clears throat> about two months ago, we had a, another similar case. And I think this is a great opportunity to showcase the fine work that our department is doing. It's another man that was arrested and put behind bars and, you know, is, is, is going to face charges. So our advice to, to family families, parents, children, teenagers, anyone in general, is to just be aware of your surroundings. Always know what's going on around you. As our victim's mother was stating, you know, don't have earbuds in, don't be looking down at your phone, uh, be aware, she, she mentioned something really important, you know, be aware of traffic signals, you know, when you can cross, when you shouldn't cross, stuff like that. Just another thing we, we want to emphasize is, you know, pay attention, pay attention to everything that's going on, as many details as you can as you can possibly imagine, you know, color of clothing, color of vehicles, you know, intersections, street signs, stuff like that. And just be be aware. And in this case, when it comes to children or juveniles, adolescents, you know, teenagers, notify a responsible person, notify an adult. And as our victim's mother was saying, you know, notify the police. The sooner we can respond, the sooner we can get this information, the sooner we can preserve evidence, the sooner we can apprehend people, arrest them, and, and, and put them behind bars and, you know, bring justice to our victims. One during last question. The, during the questioning, did the suspect say the motive at all? Durante the interrogation, the suspicioso dijo cuál fue su motivo por querer raptar a esta jovencita? Oh, that's a great question. It's an ongoing investigation. I don't have that information available right now. Y en español, esa es una pregunta muy buena. Este, lamentablemente no tengo esa información disponible ahora mismo porque es una investigación que estamos actualmente investigando. No es la primera vez que esto se registra en la ciudad de Glendale. ¿Esto podría representar una tendencia o peligro para estos niños? Pues estos tipos de incidentes ocurren en todos lados. No necesariamente en Glendale. No es un problema de Glendale, es un problema del mundo entero. Hay personas malas que quieren hacer maldades a gente buena, en este caso a niños. Y nuestra recomendación, nuestro aviso a los padres, a las familias, a las personas, es que protejan a sus seres queridos y tengan estas conversaciones para que puedan proteger la vida de ellos mismos y la de los demás. Officer Oficial Moroni Méndez. Moroni Méndez.
So once again, thank you guys for the coverage. And just to reiterate what Maroney just uh, answered in Spanish, this is not a Glendale crime. This is a universal crime. This is something that we hope by putting this information out, by educating parents to have these tough conversations with their kids, opening up that dialogue that this is something that we can prevent from happening. Um, this was an unfortunate situation, but what we can say is we are fortunate that this gentleman is off the street, the other gentleman is off the street, and that this open dialogue will continue to happen with parents and we can avoid something like this from happening. So I thank you guys once again.